गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स Today we are going to take up a new topic and that is migration. Now what do we mean by migration? To migrate means to move to a home. It might be a new place and the shifting can be either permanently or temporarily. Now surely you would have heard of migratory birds and animals which travel seasonally from one part of the world to another however human migration is the movement of people from one place to another over long distances so here you can see how people are moving from one place to another over long distances and the purpose is to live in a new location either permanently or for a long period of time however migration excludes short term movements like nomadic people who move from one place to another now they cannot be called as migrants tourists who come to visit new places and they return so they can also not be called as migrants commuters they are the people who move from one part of the city to another for purpose of their work but they again return either in the same day or maybe after one or two days so all these people cannot be considered as migrants however the seasonal movement of hired farm laborers and transhumans that is the seasonal movement of pastoral people with their animals from warmer pastures in the winters and back again in summer here you can see this pastoralist is carrying his sheep down the mountain because it might be turning winter when summer approaches again he will take all these sheep to the higher parts of the mountains where there will be enough grasses and meadows migration is voluntary when people themselves choose to migrate for example in search of better opportunities like many people who want to migrate to another place when they find that they will get a better living condition they will have access to a better health care they might have access to better education economic factors include better wages better prospects of employment so all these are prospects and causes which can make people to voluntarily migrate from one place to another however some migration can be forced migration and why do this happen this can happen because of climatic change here you can see due to extensive floods people are carrying all their goods and they are moving away from the place this is a picture which has been taken from bangladesh where unprecedented floods 
have forced people to migrate to another part of the country. Here you can see forest fire and it is a raging fire which is occurring in California. This is also a result of climatic change and it has forced thousands of people to evacuate from their homes. This picture is of Syria where due to continuous wars have led people to move away from the country. So all these are examples of forced migration where due to climatic change, wars, famines, lack of food, all these forces people to move away from their countries. Now all those people who are forced to move away from their country, they are known as refugees. So who is a refugee? It is a generally speaking a displaced person who has been forced to cross national boundaries and who cannot return home safely. So many people are crossing the Mediterranean Sea. They are all people from Syria and they are moving to a land which can provide them with safety. Now, what are the different types of migration? Migration may be outward or inward. Outward migration or the movement of people out of the region is called emigration and people who move out are known as emigrants. Immigration. It refers to inward migration or the movement of people into a region and the people who are moving into a region they are known as immigrants. Now the regions from where people emigrate they are known as the donor regions while the regions which receive the people they are known as the receiver regions. So donor regions are mostly countries which are poor or there might be a lot of unemployment or there might be climatic change. So countries like Mexico, India, China, Russia, Ukraine, Bangladesh, Pakistan are some of the donor countries. And these are the receiving countries. The USA, Russia, Canada, Germany, Saudi Arabia and UK. Now you might be wondering that you, Russia comes under emigrating countries also as well as immigrating countries also. Now this is because Russia is a very large country. In large areas of Russia, there is very little population. But the resources are quite a lot. So many a times, people move to Russia in order to get jobs in the colder and those remote regions from where Russia can get a lot of minerals or it can get people to work in the forests, which the natives of Russia are not ready to do. Migration can be internal migration also. Now, what do we mean by this term internal migration? When people move to a new home in another place, but within the same country, it is known as internal migration. So people can move from one city to another in the same city. They can move from the countryside, that is from villages to towns in the same country or they can also move from one state to another. So all these when it is occurring within the same country then it is known as internal migration.
International migration refers to when people cross an international border and move to a new home in a different country and also it might be in a different continent. So when they are moving internationally from one continent to another, then it is known as intercontinental. And when they are migrating in the same continent from one country to another, then it is known as intracontinental. So there are several examples where the migration of Europeans in different parts of the world is an example of intercontinental migration. Why? When the partition took place and many people migrated from India to Pakistan, but more people had migrated from Pakistan to India and it is an example of intracontinental migration. I hope I have made myself clear in the introduction of the lesson migration. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.